Hi, this is the Flash After Show on AfterBuzz TV. Tonight we're breaking down Season 3, Episode 3 called Magenta. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Hello, hello, hello. The Flash After Show on AfterBuzz TV. As you show us the time warp. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good. Pretty good. Good. <laughs> good to see you, Tari. <laughs> good to be here. Of course. Who's sitting next to you? Lucretia. Oh, I know. Oh, Lucretia Lyon. Uh, yeah. We lost Tiana and Yell in the Flashpoint time warp, but we'll be back next week. Have no worries. Let's yes. do quick intros and we'll get to it. I'm Jeffrey Masters. I choose from Jeff Masters 1. And I'm Tari J. Miller. You can find me at Tari J. T A U R I J A Y. And I'm Lucretia Lyon, guys, so you can always find me at L-A-C-R-E-T-I-A-L-Y-O-N anywhere on the internet, since there is only one. And if you're watching live and are in the chat room, Lucretia's in there. Also, give us a quick breakdown of yourself, Lucretia. You also do the Legends of Tomorrow After Show for us. Yes. And are all around love comics. Yes, and it's cool being Jesse Quick was in this episode because on Book Circle Online, we'll be doing a comic book exchange for the Justice Society of America. So, and yeah. that's tomorrow? Tomorrow at 6 p.m. PST on Book Circle Online. Cool. Yeah, yeah Lucretia does a weekly comic book show on there, mm -hmm. so thanks for plugging that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Also, thanks for wearing that, that Flash t-shirt. I know, I was like, gotta be festive. Uh, did you make that? <laughs> hmm? Did you make that? No, I bought it oh. a Hot Topic like every other nerd. <laughs> she made the money that yeah. allowed her to get it. It looks like <laughs> yeah. it painted on. I was so impressed at first. I was like, yeah, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's kick it off with this episode. Uh, the, I w was not expecting it to be bookmarked with like the dates and the love. That being said, I really liked it. Yeah. This is like the most Iris, very heavy episode we've had the entire series. Yeah. Um, I liked that because I like that they weren't uh, really good straight off the bat. Because um, especially if you were friends before and like pseudo siblings, it's hard to transition. Uh, from that relationship to a, a romantic relationship. So I love that like Barry was doing all the shortfalls of someone new to uh, uh, an ordeal. So he's like getting all the, a bunch of flowers and he's taking her to the expensive restaurant and like all the stuff that like isn't really the hallmark of their relationship, but he's just trying to impress her the way that he would do any other girl. Yeah. The formal dinner threw me mm. off, like in, in an enjoyable to watch way. Yeah. I was like, oh, Barry, don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, there were so many like cute little coupley moments in this whole episode, though. It's like, oh, we're sort of back to the the nice flash, you know, not the deep dark, you know, kind of arrowy flash. It was the first two episodes, yeah, Aww. yeah. Aww. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course, I was very happy to see Harrison Wells back again. I just love that character. Me too, and I thought that the first two episodes of this season seemed to be missing something, and I didn't realize what it was until he popped up, and I was like, that was it. It was Dr. Wells. Do you y'all feel as strongly about Harrison as Jesse Quick? I mean, mm -hmm. yes, I view him as a father figure. Wait, what? Wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I misunderstood the question. <laughs> okay, let me let me. Um, uh, <laughs> I tend to ask like nine minute questions, and uh -huh. people are like, "What did he ask?" So I, that I probably just went in the opposite direction. Um, I feel so strongly about my love for Harrison Wells and that character and oh. seeing him on screen. I personally do not have the same attachment to his daughter. Um, I like her, especially now that she's a speedster. Um, like, I feel like it gives her a little extra kick. Yeah. As a, like, in terms of her character and her development, because it gives her a place, it gives her a platform to jump off of and learn and grow. Whereas, like, before, she was mostly a tool for Harrison Wells in the, in the last season, where she was basically just, uh, like, a, a prop for him to want to do things. Yeah, I forgot that we actually didn't see them that much together last season. She was in her little cage and we had like flashbacks of her and there was like flames. Um, and it's not that I don't like her or the character. I just like the Harrison Wells who's more selfish and who's broody and who's telling Barry what he needs to do. And um, I know that having a daughter and seeing different sides of him makes him, you know, multidimensional. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be interesting. But sometimes for me, it, it it possibly veers out of character for how strongly he feels about Jesse. 
and um, how helicoptery of a parent he is. And now I, I don't know if that is just like a normal father reaction to their daughter. Like, no, like keep your powers inside. But to me, that's such a bizarre and like 360 degree like reaction. Mm. Well, I mean, I view it kind of like he's a he's a control freak for one. And also he's a, a scientist who has lived in a world with all these metas. And, and so he knows the worst that can happen, especially living in a world with Zoom. So, like, it makes sense that he is overprotective, especially considering he already lost his wife. She's the last remnant of anything that he has close to a, a real relationship. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I agree. I sort of like that this gives Wells that other dimension, but he hasn't lost that sort of selfish, childish side that we like. Because, you know, the whole not bit, you know, the Wayne's world S thing with Cisco is like, that's the Wells I know and I like. But I'm also not bothered by this deep relationship he has with Jesse. And I feel that this is sort of new. He's more protective after what happened with Zoom. So I think he was probably kind of like, I think she even talks about how he didn't seem to care about her until, you know, her mom died, she got kidnapped, all these things that he was just sort of not there. And this is new for him. You know? Oh, I didn't think yeah. of it from that perspective that this is his last way to hold on to his wife who died. Wait, mm -hmm. do we, no, on Earth 2, we don't know that she died, did we? I feel like they said that she died. Yeah. Either, either uh, way, she's like yeah, definitely I feel not so. in Chat, the... if oh. you guys know for sure, because we're trying to think of... Yeah, let us know. Yeah. Because my ears have always been like tuned looking out for like Liberty Bell references. Yeah. So I feel like I would have been like, like remembered her dying. Right. I don't actually know the answer to that. I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's um, a mystery. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe it is in character then. I don't know. I, I'm not willing to make a decision either way um, for his, like, crazy reactions. So maybe I'll just say, like, it's not my favorite part of his character. Right. Yeah, I love Ivan Soto's way of putting it. He calls him parallels. He's a dick with a heart. I, I kind of like that. that. That's a really <laughs> succinct way of saying it. <laughs> nice. He has, like, one thing he loves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do, do we... The conversation with Caitlin and Jesse Quick... I liked how she said, like, sometimes, like, it's taking it slow with your powers is important, but I still don't know what, like, the bigger reason from keeping it from her team and her intelligent friends would be. Caitlin Snow's powers. I think that she wouldn't have done that if they hadn't met Killer Frost before and known who she was on Earth 2. I feel that that's her reservation is what are they going to do to her after what happened with Killer Frost? Or are they, you know, because they would kind of be judgmental is what she feels. And they did answer our question here in the chat. Several people said, yes, she died on Earth 2, speaking of Wells' wife. Thank you, Chad. Yes, thank you, guys. Nice. Yes. Wait, remind me. Caitlin and Killer Frost met last season yes. when they went mm -hmm. to Earth 2? Mm-hmm. Oh, because Caitlin went with them. No. She was kidnapped uh, by Zoom. Yeah. Oh, it's all coming back to me now. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, I'm going to need you to says. go and rewatch this. No. Um, it's, it's so late. <laughs> Dad's tired. Umberto Lozano says, since when are uh, Caitlin and Jesse cool like that? I was like, even Caitlin said, she's like, yeah, we're not friends. Why are you saying that, Dr. Wells? <laughs> yeah. So Wally and Jesse are. Yeah, that's adorable, by the way. I thought so last season, and then this one, I was like, oh, she saved him. Mm. It's also so subtle. You yeah. know, like, sometimes you need to like, root for the relationships where you're like, I'm hoping they couple up. And it's something that like I want to see or something like they're, that they're showing us. This will definitely happen next episode. It's just so like small and yeah. necessary on a, a not subtle show. Yeah, because yeah, to me, it's just like I'd almost rather root for them than Iris and Barry even because we've just had this will they or won't they with Iris and Barry and I'm just sort of like out of it. Lucretia, and even though I think it's a little bit fighting better. words. I know. Whoa. I, I like the way that they have been the last few episodes because it doesn't seem so incesty. But with Jesse and Molly, <laughs> I'm like, this is really building something here. And, you know, it's cute and it doesn't seem to take up too much of the other storylines, like, say, you know, your main couple does. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And they have so much chemistry. It's, it's hard to ignore. Like, I feel like they were written together because of how much chemistry they had. Like, I think at first when they met, you know, they were just had very small scenes together. But as they interacted, the writers were like, yeah, we can do something with this. Oh, my God, yeah. I love that. Is there any historical precedence in the comics for a Jesse Quick and Kid Flash relationship? 
No, I don't think I can't think of one because they were in different timelines. Yeah, yeah, because she was more of like the early like Jay Garrick, you know, JSA stuff, and Wally came much later. And I they did have crossovers, but I don't think they ever hinted at a relationship. Yeah, okay. he was actually closer to like Magenta. She was his childhood friend. And they don't do that in this, except they kind of hinted at possibility that maybe on another timeline he knew her because he seemed to be affected by it. Okay. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. I, I like that the Flash writers have been very clear from day one that there are many iterations of Flash, and this is another iteration, not a copy of, like, X-Comic. Right. I think that's a very smart move. Did you see in the chat you saw? Uh, yes. Uh, Renji90998 says, you need help from Alchemy to regain your memory. So I was like, that's pretty cute. Yes, thank <laughs> you. Like, <laughs> Send like, it he now. He wants you to have some powers. I want powers. <laughs> yeah. Y'all, I was not expecting how powerful Magenta was going to be. Yeah, I liked that. And I feel that this isn't going to be her only appearance. <gasps> yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you get an actress like Joey King... You're probably going to have more later. I like her a lot. She was good. I mean, I would love it if for some kind of finale, whether it be mid or like season, she is like their trump card. You know, she's like honed her ability. It's because to to be able to lift a tanker is oh my bananas. God. I love that. That's what she went to our. Yeah. Like you know, I'm gonna go for the biggest thing I can find. Yeah. But it wasn't like when she lifted the car. I was like, yo, props to Magenta, Magenta, yes. <laughs> um, and then the tanker. Yeah. Girl. Mm. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, that's I didn't even think about that. That'd be amazing and like the like nine episode crossover we're anticipating that um they just bring her out from her little farm Mm -hmm. is she on a farm (laughs) (laughs) well she was born in nebraska in the comics i think she was a midwestern girl and a friend of wally's but yeah that's what i'm hinting at of course exactly you were on the right track there (laughs) good job yeah yeah. (laughs) um you know captain cold how in the comics, it's like the borderline good bad thing. Yeah. Is that how Magenta is also played? Yes. Yeah. For the most part, she you know was a friend of Wally's. You know, and the the abuse storyline is what I remember too. Is that you know so everybody understood where she was coming from, and she tended to help the Teen Titans, and I think she was also in some Justice League stuff too. Okay. Cool. There's just so much, like the brilliance of having four shows. Uh, and the different time zones of Legends is that when you fall in love with a character like Magenta, I think we're all like 100% on board with her, they can use her a thousand ways. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and you got such a good actress. I mean, I know she's in demand, and apparently you are, Tari. Uh, Keith McGinnis wants you to explain Magenta's actual powers. Her actual, I mean, it's... Uh, I don't. I don't want to be a boring guy, but it Mm -hmm. feels like she is definitely like a a telekinetic. Um, I mean... The fact that she has to use her hands and and all that stuff, uh, and it affects her eyes, makes it seem like there's a lot more going on. But like, I mean, yeah, she's she's a, she's a pretty sweet telepathic or yeah. telekinetic. She's a lot like Magneto. Yeah. Mm. In that in that other comic book universe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure I don't yeah. know if I'm familiar. <laughs> Tell me more. It, yeah. The um. The very, very first X-Men movie with yeah. the, I think it was like in the Holocaust scene where mm. they're like bending the metal bars in. Like, that was reminding me of like when they were in the police station, just bending in the metal bars. Yeah. I was like, I see you. Magenta. Yeah. Magenta, Magneto sounds very similar. Mm. Wait, was that Ian McKellen? No. Okay. Yes, it was. It was. Yes. Oh, it was. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. God, he's such a good actor. Mm. Really is. Uh, it just, <laughs> Joey King switches Magenta, between Magenta and between Kane, what's her name? Frankie. Uh, Frankie, Frankie yeah. Kane. Yes. It was just so great. Yes. Mm-hmm. Also, she's about four years old. She was born in 1999. She's actually 17. She's so young. She's so young. She's born in 1999. Yeah. Oh, man. I know that uh, obviously this has nothing to do with how much we like Magenta because this is not shade at her, but this was such a. F- uh, episode that was not focused on the big bad. Mm-hmm. There's so many other things going on, and I think that's like very refreshing in the series that can kind of get caught up in the like episodic nature of. And now we will defeat this villain, and now we've defeated the villain. Yeah. And 
th that did not feel like this episode in a great way because we had this Wally stuff, which we'll talk about, and Harrison popped back up and like hints about Caitlin. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel that the you know Magenta storyline was a good way of sort of explaining the feelings that say Jesse and Wally were having and their parents talking to them trying, and I feel that that's why it was a good story. You know to use for their explanation and sort of getting to that place of, you know, our power's good, our power's bad. Like, what are the, you know, implications here? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like that tonally they they were able to balance a really heavy topic like uh, like abuse with like the lighter tone and, and jokes that they had throughout, just so the whole time you weren't like, man, this is messed up. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah. You're exactly right. Yeah, it, you know, it's like Law and Order SVU. Yeah, there's some messed up stuff that happens, but it's still kind of funny. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and Ivan Soto wants to make it clear he did not like Magenta, but everyone else seemed to be okay with him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ivan, yeah. stop trolling yeah. us. <laughs> Jeez. It was really a small, small, small moment, but I was really happy when they brought up that Barry Allen is brilliant. You know, he yeah. can run fast. By the way, this is an exclusive. He's very fast. And sometimes we get caught up in just like, oh, he's the Flash. He has powers. But uh, like early in the series is set up that this is a very brilliant person. He's a scientist. He works CSI. Mm -hmm. and, and I like that. Yeah, and that's how Barry was sort of always portrayed in the comics. And then even, you know, less so in the 90s TV series. But in this show, he starts out off Arrow as just a CSI, a scientist. You know, he doesn't have his powers yet. And they're already going to this guy to get his help because he is smart. And I hate that sometimes they forget that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we've gone away from that a bit. Yeah, I think it's it's weird because the, the times where you, you feel like Barry is quote unquote not smart are like the more EQ as opposed to IQ moments where it's like, it's all about his relationships and, and you can tell that he grew up being like a weird nerdy kid mm -hmm. and so like he makes uh, weird nerdy kid decisions in terms of uh, like relationships being black and white or, or making a decision in terms of like how to handle a certain situation because or a formal restaurant for a first date right yes um, and I, I really enjoy that piece like and kind of in that vain a little bit slightly I really liked when we got the world through his eyes at the beginning of the episode where everything was going really slowly um ugh, it was beautiful that was an effect we've not seen yet on the series I thought it was so cool yeah it, um, no that was yeah exactly what you said it was just like a little glimpse into how he's feeling in his thoughts and uh it just it took me aback because it's not like totally what we've seen um, just like those moments. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's okay. I want a series to continue to evolve and grow. And um, I hope that they like it as much as we did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, give us more of that. Yeah. Totally. I know. And it just, it brings us back to the Barry Allen that most of us know from the comics or just other iterations that is this relatable guy that, you know, like you say, he's a real nerdy person who wants to save the world. He doesn't have to, like, say Batman or Superman. They have that crutch on their shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. What do we think about Wally's uh, very, very apparent desire for powers? I feel that that may have been hinted at and with his feelings of, you know, familiarity with Magenta and her talking about the dreams. I think that that's part of what's fueling him as well as, you know, his competition with Barry. But uh, a lot of people in the chat are saying, yeah, that that's probably it, is that Wally is having these dreams. It's why, yes, yeah, Seb Russell said, Wally's face, when Magenta was explaining her dreams, it seemed like he was having them as well. Or having that familiarity that he knew her in another timeline. I feel that there's maybe a little bit of elements of both based on, you know, what I've read as far as those two characters are connected. Mm -hmm. And he was the fl kid Flash in Flashpoint, so... Yeah. I've also yeah. had dreams. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about them. Well, they might not come true. What were you wearing? A Batman suit. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. And cool. people called me Ben. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I agree. But I also feel like Wally feels left out because he's the only one who's not able to help people. Like, Cisco is a, a genius who's always making different gadgets for people. Uh, uh, 
Uh, oh, I forget her. I, Caitlin. I, Caitlin. That is her name. Thank <laughs> you. I would have spent six minutes just making noises. Um, but Caitlin is also helping out, and she's also a super genius. Like, everyone around him is actively a part of this team, and he's kind of on the sidelines. And so it, it makes sense that, especially because it was Jesse, and they were both hit by the same wave of dark matter, it, it just shows how unfair life can be. And so he, it, it really hit him a lot harder. Yeah, and I think, too, it's a test of Wally's character as well, is, like, he's had it rough, you know, much like this Magenta character. So I think, you know, that is as well. It's like he was kind of hoping for, you know, not just this new family he's thrust in, but to get powers and want to save the world as well, to get him out of, you know, that dark, you know, childhood he had with his drug-addicted mother. Yeah, as Michael Drew would say, mm. brother can't get no powers in here. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me this. <laughs> Tell me this. Yes. I laughed on the inside. Um, I uh, I'm not checking my emotion matters. anymore, but it's like a personal problem and it's not okay. a choice. Got it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's an affliction. Oh. It's my struggle. Um, <laughs> do we think that mm-hmm. there could be a world in this show where Wally like hooks up with alchemy and gets his powers that way? I feel that that may be where they're going because mm-hmm. that, to me, with that look he gave Magenta and knowing that that's how she had got her powers and that she had them on this other Earth Flashpoint um, timeline, he probably took that and thinks, you know what, I'll just get them myself and doesn't realize the implications of that because, yes, he may have been a good guy in Flashpoint as Kid Flash, but what would you be on Earth 1? Yeah. Mm. And also, I could see him th- like being so big-headed to think, well, I'm a good person. Like, if yeah. this has like evil like thrusting on me, like I can push it back. Right. Yeah. And I, I'm not not to toot my own horn, guys, but that was my prediction last week. <laughs> was it really? Yeah. yeah. Oh man, not that so... I say it's original. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and no, I mean, you're only helping to reinforce that I'm a genius, just like Barry Allen. <laughs> Thank you. It was, Thank you, Invisible Audience. Yeah, and so Godspeed welcome. Night 7 agrees with you. He's like, yeah, I thought that too. <laughs> yes. It would just be a really, really fascinating dynamic to bring to the show that we've yeah. not seen. Yeah. God, and that, it's such a great option too where it's not just like, I don't know, like Joe being like, well, I'm going to start drinking a lot more lately, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like Captain Lance. <laughs> or former oh. Captain. Yeah. Who is that? Oh, an arrow. arrow. <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> yeah. Is it on CW? Uh, yeah, it's so. new. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. Um, it's only six years old. It's cool. Well, yeah. I saw yeah. archery, so I'm sure I'd love it. Oh, yeah. I think you <laughs> There's would. There's a lot yeah. of archers on that show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is the chat room in agreement? Do they like the idea of like a like Wally Alchemy hookup? Yeah, I, you know, most people in here are saying that that is exactly where they think it's going. And to me, the conflict that would arise with Joe and Barry and Iris, like, you know, because Barry's going to have to go against him if that turns out bad and he goes evil. Like, Ivan Soto's like, yeah, Wally will obviously do that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see him in, like, a black Flash costume. That would be cool. Yeah. Um, also, though, it would also create some amazing conflict with Caitlyn Snow because she sees, oh, God, another, like, super villain. I mm-hmm. can't show anybody my freezing hand. Yeah. She has cold hands. It's mm. true. She's Bad a woman. Circulation. Just kidding. Now she's going to have to hook up with Heat Wave because we've killed Ronnie off too many times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. What if they bring him back? Alchemy. Alchemy's like, here's your fiance again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I want it. God. Wally. No, Wally's thirsty for some powers. Uh, and some Jesse Quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I also like that in this episode, uh, I like, just... I, I like different things that we don't expect. <laughs> uh, I like that Barry and Magenta solve their problems by talking. Yeah, yeah there that wasn't was nice. a fight scene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My first thought when they had her in the lab was are they going to put her in the pipeline? Because that would be messed up. But I. Oh, a I, child. I, yeah, Aww. right? But I love that, yeah, they managed to. I feel like out of all the superheroes, especially the superhero shows that we have right now, Barry is the most likely to be able to solve a problem with words and and like make the person's life better than it was. How do you solve a problem like magenta? 
Is that what you're getting at? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I feel that he could relate to her on a level because, you know, he had had a rough childhood as well, and that's pretty much the theme of this show is like, let's just help these messed up kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're exactly right. Had Joe West not stepped in, he would have been an orphan as well. Exactly. Oh, my God. And then the episode ends with him and Iris back on their date. Can somebody tell me where they zoomed off to, like, on that pier? Where was that? Do we know? Vancouver, I imagine. (laughs) <laughs> okay, I ask yes. because they like zoom through the city, they zoom through the country, they get to this pier, yeah. it's beautiful, and then she's like, go, it's fine. But like, is she Ubering home? That's a mm-hmm. big bill. Like, what is she doing? I just don't know. I need I need that like extra 60 seconds of the show. You oh, need yeah. to have Iris pull out her phone and be like, I gotta get a lift back. Um. Yeah, and she's like, let me yeah. just like, do like the ride share. I can't. I mean, Jessica could pick, Jesse could pick her up though. Jesse quick. Oh yeah, she, yeah. she's yeah. so quick. It's uh, true. Absolutely. I wrote kiss. There was a big kiss again. <laughs> oh yes. G- Ju- oh, this is a note I can't read, but I just read it. <laughs> Ju- Julian is acting evil. I kind of think that he's Dr. Alchemy because I feel that there's a lot of people here in the chat that are speculating Malcolm like Keith McGinnis. No, Malcolm will be on Legends, thankfully. He'll get some better material there on the Legion of Doom. You don't think Julian is so obvious that it's like a diversion? Yeah, I definitely think he's a red herring. Yeah, he might be, but I feel like he's definitely sinister in some way. Whether he's just a dick or, you know, an actual villain, I don't know, but... I just wanted to like turn that down a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I more see him, like, I don't think he is Dr. Alchemy, but I could see him becoming, like, falling under Alchemy's spell, especially because he suspects the Flash so much. Um, it's his chance to get answers. And, it's, and, like, he seems like a curious enough guy to where he would definitely want to just dive into this world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I also don't know if my feelings towards him are being um, shadowed by his past as Draco Malfoy. That's true. <laughs> Luckily, I don't have any feelings about that. So I'm like, this is a new guy to me. I am one of those weird people that did not get that into Harry Potter. That is so off brand for you. I know. It's just horrible. Hmm, but the chat, Michael Blake says it could be Ronnie as Dr. Alchemy. Um, unfortunately, I know that is not true. At least not played by um, the cuter Emil, <laughs> <laughs> Robbie. Oh. Or lunatic reasons like Jason Todd is Alchemy. <laughs> yeah. If only. <laughs> These are all other people. Yeah. yeah. These are Who's people. 69Bs thinks that Julian is too. Okay, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't yeah. bev- I'm, not, I'm not happy with anybody's suggestions. Yeah. Okay. I, <laughs> yes. I hope that Alchemy isn't someone that we've met yet. Um, last year, uh, or I guess last season, the big mystery was like, who is Zoom? Which overshadowed like us like as an audience and as a as fans, like thinking about the plot and then like it like it really overshadowed like what was happening in the story because all you could think about was who Zoom was. So I really hope Alchemy is just a dude uh, who has like a stone, uh, as opposed to being like, oh man, Zoom is actually like past Barry, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I I like that. It, I like that. Yeah. And I like it so much that I want to stop talking and have as good of predictions. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The preview for next week, we see the Mirror Master. Yes. Yeah. Which Cisco does not name. I love how Dr. Wells is like, booyah. (laughs) Also, Magenta named herself. Did she name herself? Yes, she did. Okay, Magenta named herself. Cisco's out of a job. It's true. Just homeless. Um, we can say too that Mirror Master is played by Gray Damon. Mm-hmm. He'll be on our show next week. Oh wow! <gasps> oh, oh my God! Surprise! Yeah. I forgot to tell you. Hooray! <laughs> That's great. I'm excited. Tiana and Yell are going to get him right now. That's why they aren't here. <laughs> um, does anybody have pretty predictions? We kind of talked about it a bit. Lucretia? Yeah. Um, there was actually a good prediction since you know I'm tired. Tar- I was glad that Cisco didn't mope around this week about his brother and did the cool primal fear reference. But we have Cedric extended play thinks that Cisco's brother could be alchemy. Dante, uh, like, cause hmm, I don't that'd know. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Oh. I mean, he was a, a meta in the other Earth. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Ooh. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, I was like, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh. 
Um, I think that I'm going to make a wild prediction and say that uh, when uh, Wally goes evil, the only way that they're going to be able to stop him is through Caitlyn's cold powers. Uh, and that will be how she reveals herself as a meta. Uh, we know that cold powers or cold stuff can uh, counter the Flash. That's why Captain Cold was so effective. So I think that that's the way that they're going to force her out of uh, hiding. That's very specific. I like it. Yes. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Cause, and we are slated to have Captain Cold back uh, on the Flash as well. So, mm. mm-hmm. What if... You you know how um, Jesse Quake was in the front of the car and it scared her powers out of her. Yeah. What if a moment like that also happens with Caitlyn, where like she is just forced to like use them at a hundred percent. She has to stop something. I would ever get her powers from a car. <laughs> yeah. It's like oh she stands in front of a car and then yeah. 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 and then she creates eternal winter and then runs off. To live in an ice castle until her sister comes. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Got it. And she might be a lesbian in the sequel. <laughs> oh, sweet. Um, <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> the other thing. She's had some red trouble. <laughs> what if Captain Cold's gun like shoots her and she's like not phased by it, and mm. then she's like, ah, crap. Like now <laughs> they know. Yeah, since this version of Leonard Snart is supposed to go back to just being evil, not the hero that in Leonard became. So I could see him trying to kill her and then it not working, and that's how they find out. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm looking forward to, for the season on the whole, them working out their Flash, Vibe, um, Jesse Quick, all these new superheroes, how they work together, and how much of a normal basis they do it on. Yeah, because I'd really like to see more of a team now that we're getting you know more powered people yeah. on his side versus just the Flash. Yeah. Or like like how they set up in the last episode with uh, Flash's dad, uh, who's now not Flash's dad, um, <laughs> saying like you can't always go back in time, and so that stops the audience from wondering, okay, we we can't do that, and so I need like a good reason why Vibe isn't out there vibing all over the place. Cisco's vibing all over the place. That's just because <laughs> it would be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. there's a uh, if I were to conjecture yeah um conject away baby i would say that like especially since he's working on the suit there's a chance that most of his power uh in this timeline that we're in now was more focused on the blasty piece as opposed to the vision portion Mm -hmm. Uh, because like our last season all of it was his visions and then in the last few episodes he started working on his vibe blast yeah Um, So in this timeline, it could be that the opposite is true. So he may not even have discovered his his vision powers, or they're just super undeveloped. Okay. I like that. Um, Guys, this was so much fun. Thank you so much. Lucretia, where can the good people find you until next time? You guys can always find me at L-A-C-R-E-T-I-A-L-Y-O-N anywhere on the internet since there is only one. And, of course, Thursdays here on AfterBuzz TV for the Legends of Tomorrow after show at 10 p.m. PST and on Book Circle Online for the Comic Book Exchange Wednesdays at 6 p.m. PST. Amazing. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Tari J. It's T-A-U-R-I-J-A-Y. And also on the other DC Slate (laughs) shows like Supergirl and also Arrow. (laughs) And I'm Jeffrey Masters. I tweet from Jeff Masters 1. We'll see you next week. Good night. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Uh, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 